We all do know and most of us have experienced the challenges in removal of a stubborn epinucleus bowl. Let's together understand the principles and what I would consider a simplified technique of actually removing it. Let's move to watching this surgery. Now in this particular case, the surgeon has completed the nucleus emulsification. We have a pupil that's quite small, about 4 millimeters, and there's a thick epinucleus sheet that seems to be in four different quadrants. Let's look at the challenges and how we overcame them in dealing with this thick epinucleus bowl in this patient with a small pupil. Watch how multiple attempts at pulling out of the cortex in the thickest part which you do expect to find with loose attacks near the equator is not very successful. Because of the thickness of this bowl, there is a tendency of it to fall back each time I get a hold of it. Now this is the real challenge here. And as you can see, there is a small pupil. Now this small pupil limits my visibility that makes this challenge even worse. Note how I use the irrigation cannula as a retractor that pulls the iris away which enhances my visibility in the periphery. Despite multiple attempts at going with the irrigation aspiration and trying to hold on to some part of the epinuclear bowl, I'm unable to get hold of any part of it. Now let's see what happens here. I retract the iris inferiorly and I pass the aspiration cannula deep to the epinuclear bowl. In this way, I'm able to elevate it and get it out of the capsular bag, after which, with the help of the bimanual irrigation aspiration, I aspirate it. In a similar manner, I now go deep to the nasal epinucleus and elevate it and bring it out of the bag and aspirate it. Being unable to retrieve any more of the epinuclear sheet in this manner, I now bring the instruments out of the eye. I now attempt a viscodissection, wherein I take some viscoelastic and inject it slightly forcefully in the deep subcapsular plane. This, as you can see, mobilizes the entire epinuclear sheet and elevates it out of the capsular bag. We now re-attempt to remove this epinucleus and now you can see the ease with which one is able to manipulate it out of the capsular bag. Now once you've got hold of the epinucleus, there are two ways in which you can proceed. Either you draw the entire epinuclear bowl out of the capsular bag, reintroduce viscoelastic, change the irrigation aspiration to the phaco probe again in the epinucleus mode and then aspirate it with the epinucleus mode of the phaco emulsification. This technique is a lot quicker. In this particular case, I choose option 2, wherein I continue to aspirate the epinucleus with the irrigation aspiration itself. The reason why I chose this is because it didn't seem to be that thick and I'm able to aspirate it with ease. Let's now watch the rest of the epinucleus removal. As the epinucleus presents itself, I keep aspirating it from the edges with a view of downsizing it. Here's another trick I'd like to share. Having acquired a hold of one edge of the epinuclear bowl, I now usually introduce the irrigation under it, which helps me elevate it further out of the bag, thereby helping facilitate its removal. With this, we come to the end of the epinucleus removal. Dealing with an aspiration of a stubborn epinuclear bowl can be a significant challenge, even in the best and most experienced of surgical hands. Therefore, it is of paramount importance that you understand very deeply, that you understand the correct principles and the technique of dealing with this epinuclear bowl. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you.